Hello, and welcome back to Papo and Yo, part five. And we're here to prepare the dark ritual. To repair this last one. <laughs> yes, the dark reviving ritual. Also, more paint. So, if this is a dark ritual, so where is the code? Now, to prepare the sacrifice. Okay. Whose turn was it to bring the sacrifice? Oh, damn it. Who oh, forget to bring code? I think we have enough magic as is without sacrifices. No. Nonsense. It's tradition. Yeah, it's, it's more about the... Uh, uh, image we try to do and magic. Yeah, do you know how pe uh, the tribes will say about us if we don't do the goat? Well, what if we just squeeze the raw anger out of someone? Mm. That, that could be pretty brutal. And uh, yeah, so we can do that. But only if there is no boats available. Uh, I don't think there are any goats. I think we're just going to have to use monster and use his anger. Yeah, he's a goat monster. His face kind of reminds me a little bit of a goat, but that's about it. And for safety, I throw a, another coconut down there. I would have been fine, but it's a safety measure. I'm not actually sure what to think of the design of the monster as a whole. Like it, it doesn't. It just looks like just a bizarre creation rather than like, like it doesn't look like any particular animal. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. Maybe they meant to do that. They did. We should be solving this real fast. Yeah. It was. Very hard. And now we was floating because we squeezed out some rage. Rage, wait. <laughs> rage start actually. Man. Yeah. He's gonna get you. He's gonna get you. Aw, oh, stairs, his only true weakness. Yeah, uh, stairs no. and arrow passive ways. No, and he's not the clap trap. You can actually move during this cutscene, but if you're not careful, you can get stuck in the geometry and have to restart from the last checkpoint, which was before we started the cutscene with Alejandra. So, oh, not right. recommended to have to start from the checkpoint. Yeah, so that is bad. I do like it when you actually retain control. Uh oh, oh. There you go. <laughs> I managed to get out of it though. <laughs> because I was only very slightly in. I do like it when you can retain control during cutscenes in games. Yeah, it's a nice thing. But yeah, it's possible to get all the way to where I am now in that cutscene. So, very fast if you can control it right. And that bit during that turn always scares me. It never catches me, but it always scares me. Yeah, because he's right there and he's like, I'm gonna get ya. I'm gonna get ya. Oh, I didn't get ya. Now I'm dead. Okay, so that's all three bits of anger. If it wasn't for the fact you saw this trail going off, I'd just say, you're not really squeezing the anger out of him. He's just kind of like, uh, this just really isn't worth it. <laughs> well, Alejandro said we were using his anger for the spell, so. And Lula's back. 
I'm back! Why do I feel very angry? So... Are they going to turn him into Hulk? Uh... I think Monster's already a Hulk. Lula is most likely female. But uh, it's not ever really made clear. He's what? Lula is female, probably. Oh, okay. It's a toy. Then, so he thinks it's Toy Story. How did you say that in the textbook? I. It's like Sims gibberish with their imagery. Ozzy, we've gone through, we've gone over this many times with you. Don't try to put logic in video games. Especially in Nintendo ones. So does Lula gain anything unique from this being filled with the power of rage and non-sacrificial goats? No, she's just alive again. Which is awesome. Yep, okay. Lula's back, our true friend. Yeah. And we can double jump again. Those kids in from Full Metal Alchemist should learn from me. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hey, this man. is how you do a dark ritual. Yeah, you just squeeze out someone's pure rage. And you don't lose any extra limbs or bodies or souls. Yeah, and again, this is an old strat, there's a new one where you don't grab any of this. You skip this entire puzzle with the new strats, but I didn't know about it at this time. The new strats involve just opening up the second set of... Yeah, the second set of platforms on the left side, and jumping and triggering a checkpoint, opening up a tunnel, and allowing you to continue. Sounds easy. Yeah, it is fairly easy if you know where you're aiming. But, again, didn't know about it, so I went with the old strat of actually making a bridge. Well, it's always gonna look easy from Worm's perspective, if only because he knows the solution. I could see where, going through this area my first time, I'd probably be just getting really tired of just running around this large area trying to figure out, okay, which one do I hit first, which one do I hit next? You hit everybody, just in case. Yeah, I would probably... And do I poke around to see what works? You're, you're meant to. It doesn't matter what order you get them in. You're meant to get all of them, but here I'll skip two because you don't actually need them all. But you're meant to get them all. But yeah. Stop it, worm! You're ruining the magic of the cave. I am. Yes. How? By doing by doing all these. Puzzles in a speedy fashion. I'm sorry, Neko. Aww. So, you but would prefer I'm a slow going... and painful fashion? I'm, I'm going to keep going fast. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just making a joke because, you know, sometimes it's about the experience. You know? Yeah. This is definitely a game you'll want to experience for yourself. I, I understand that, but you're only really gonna get that experience your first time. That's one of the things I really enjoy about speedrunning is the fact that after you've had that experience, now you you can challenge yourself to go back to that game and get uh, an entirely new experience. Ah, uh, well, I think yeah, that is kind of different with the game. Like, uh, it, yeah, I like it, Papa and Yo, but. Uh, you really don't know the story at the first time, but when you play it second time, or see it on play it on second time, in my case, because I don't have played this, but I have seen film play it multiple times, you notice more things about the 
game and it, like uh, what everything means while you play. Because here, there is a lot of symbolism in this game. Yeah, lots and lots of symbolism. Oh, I'm sure there is. Uh, some of the some of my favorite games or movies have done that to me. I God. I didn't quite get off the platform, but if you get a if you run off this platform before you trigger this cutscene, uh, there will be two versions of Quico. One will be down there with Monster, getting tossed around through this entire cutscene, and the other will be up here standing and talking to Alejandra. Which is freaking hilarious! Yeah, I tried to get it, but I didn't quite manage. I like those kinds of duplication glitches. Um, have any of you guys seen the speedrun for uh, Link Between Worlds? I nope. don't see how that's relevant. Probably, yeah. There's a merchant character that uh, in the speedrun they end up duplicating because okay. they skip the trigger, go ahead, and oh, there's two of them, and it's hilarious. So we basically just chase this key across the platforms to trap Monster and allow Alejandro to fix the chalk line. No, that big A speed runs. All the symphony of the night speed run is based on that big A. So this one's always <laughs> there, but I the think they're just invisible. Yep, pretty much. You can get. You can land on them just before they appear, but their hitboxes will disappear and you'll fall through them if you're too fast or too slow. You're too slow. Fuck. I did that make that joke. You named you did that joke because it is I mean, that's why. Oh no. Oh no. Pay attention, little girl. Turn around. I thought you were supposed to be the smart one! Come on! Bible thumb. And you're dead. Lol, no, you died. Bad monster! Lol, lol, Don't you eat. died. I have been grabbed just before getting into that door before. He can he can catch you there. And it's kind of scary when he does. And we actually walk through the stone above the door. And we'll see you next part.